Hello, in this video we are going to take a string and parse it into an object. So this is a file reading exercise that is built on the last exercise in the last video. So what you see on the screen here is the code from which we produced our last exercise. In the last exercise we created a list of four different car types. They had different uh, properties and then we created an array and saved each of them to a file. So the file looks like this here, the cars list. You can see that I have the year, the model, or is that the make? The Mustang is the model, the, the miles, and then 5.8 stands for the number of liters and the size of the engine. So the goal here is to be able to reverse the process that we did in the previous exercise. We want to read the data and then parse it as objects. So let's get started with a new function. So at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to insert some new code and I'm going to make a new method. So this new method will have to be public and static. The return type is going to be an array list of type car. And I'll name the function read cars from file and we'll provide a file name as a parameter. After we type the function, I need to import the array list library from java.util. The error on the red line says that I have to have a return statement. So I'll put that in now and the return statement will be at the bottom of my function. And it will not be null, it will be in a list of cars. So the file object is going to take the parameter file name and try to create a new instance of file. Then the scanner object will call s and it will use the file object that was created on the previous line. It looks like we have to do the import from our Java util library. We need to also add the, declar or the uh, declaration up here at the top where it says file not found exception. So we are going to declare a new array list of type car. We'll call it car list. This will eventually be returned by the function. So we're going to read in the file and then create a bunch of car objects. The first thing we'll do is create a while loop. So we'll use the scanner dot has next line function and we'll repeat this until we run out of lines in our file. So the first thing we need to do is capture a line. So I'll create a string and we will read in the next line from our scanner object. Now just to be clear that the cars list is going to have a bunch of lines that look like this. Each individual string will be separated by the pipe character. So we want to be able to split that line. So the function that we need to use is called split. So I'm going to create an array and call the items that we're going to split the uh, items. So you can see that line.split has a property inside here called regex, which stands for regular expression. So what I would like to do is to tell it to split the string on this character, the pipe character. However, this is a literal um, character and in reg regular expressions you need to do sometimes a, uh, a backslash to make them actually interpret that as a literal character. So regular expressions is a whole topic. It's like its own complete programming language and we could spend a lot of time on it. But for right now just let you know that this little expression here will split the characters on the pipe. So I'm going to do some testing just to see if this works. So I want to see if this is actually reading anything, so I'm going to show the split items. So it is an array, so there should be 0, 1, 2, and 3. And let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, actually there are four of them. So I'm going to put one more line in there and print out the fourth one. So this should produce some output. Let's go ahead and call this function. Let's go back up into here, the main body, into the main section. So right here on line 34, 5, I want to call the new function. So let's go down and check to see what that function name was. It was called read cars from file. So I'll copy that name and I'll put it up here in line 35. And so that should print a bunch of things on the screen. Let's see. It needs to have an argument. It needs to have a string. So the string should be carslist.txt. And let's put that in quotes so it's a string. So the program will save to this file called cars list and then immediately after read from it. Let's run it now and see what happens. So 
So sure enough, you can see we have a bunch of results being printed to the screen. So it looks like it's reading correctly and splitting up these items. So the next goal that I have is to take all of these items that I'm reading from the text file and put them into a car object. So let's start with the first one. The first item in the list is a year, so it's an integer. And it says read item zero. So what's wrong with this? It says that year needs to be changed into a string or an integer. So I'm trying to put it into an integer, but item zero is actually defined up here as an array of strings. So we need to do some conversion. So I'm going to use the word parse int and then inside of the parentheses, I'll put in the parse int command. And so it looks like the, the conversion will take place correctly. So for the remainder of these properties, we are going to use items and use the item one, two, three, and four. So make is from items one. My model is from items two. And both of these are just strings, so they don't have to be any interpretation. However, the next is odometer, and odometer is an integer. So we're going to use integer.parseInt for items three. The last one is engine size, and so we will use the function called double.parseDouble, which will turn the string into a double. The next statement is we are going to create a new car object. So I literally call it new car. And we need to put all of the five parameters in, and that should create a new car object. Then let's take the car list uh, property, which is an array list, and we'll do dot add and add the new car. Finally, after we close the while loop, we will now return the car list. So when we're finished here, we should have a list, which is an array list of cars. So now let's return back up to our function, which is the main function. And where we find the call to our new uh, method, read cars from file, let's assign that to a new object. So in preparation for printing this, I'm going to create a new array list of type car. Let's call it cars read from file. And that of course is a new array list with type car. So since the read cars from file has a return value of an array list, we can make an assignment here. So the last step here is to take the cars read from file list and print it. So I'll use a print line and let's test this out. So you can see in the output now that the last item that was printed is the array list. And sure enough, it shows all of the items that I've just been created. The last thing I'm going to do is test to see if this is really an array list. So I'm going to print item number five. So I just chose five at random and it should print one car at the bottom of the screen. And so sure enough, there it is. The fifth car in the list is a Ford Mustang. So that shows you how to interpret a list that comes from a text file. Now you obviously know that uh, we have to have a perfectly formatted list. If there is any one error in any of these lines, the program is going to crash. So just for testing purposes, let's figure that out. I'm going to put in a letter here after the eight just to see what that would do. So 3.8G means nothing as far as the computer's uh, interpretation of numbers go. So if I run this, we should see an error that says we have a problem trying to interpret this number. So there's some testing and there's an example of how to read a list from a text file.